Ubisoft is pulling out of E3 2023 entirely, and instead they're going to be hosting their own digital event. And this is a pretty big deal. Before we get into why that's such a big deal, let's talk about the news itself, because everything started with Andy Robinson over at VGC tweeting out this morning and saying he had a bit of a scoop coming. Lo and behold, VGC definitely had a scoop because Ubisoft is no longer attending E3 2023 and will instead host its own event in June. Now, this is significant because Ubisoft had already committed to E3. Ease Gamo said that they were going to be present at the show, they were looking forward to it, so obviously something changed. Now, going directly down to the statement given VGC, a spokesperson said, E3 has fostered unforgettable moments across the industry throughout the years. While we initially intended to have an official E3 presence, we've made the subsequent decision to move in a different direction and will be holding an Ubisoft Forward Live event on the 12th of June in Los Angeles. We look forward to sharing more details with our players very soon. So this is big for a couple of different reasons. First and foremost, the company had already committed to E3. They had made a public statement saying they were going to be there, and that was after Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo had all said they are not going to be present at the show. They are not going to have a physical presence, a digital presence. They are just not going to be there at all. Ubisoft said that they were, and quite frankly, it was kind of a good opportunity for them to get out there and make their presence known, because they weren't going to be overshadowed by a Sony, by a Microsoft, or by a Nintendo. They're pretty big when it comes to third-party publishers, so E3 could have been a good opportunity for them to show off what they had coming. So immediately you think, what changed? What is the big move that made Ubisoft pull out of this year's show? The first idea is that these games just might not be ready for prime time, because Ubisoft has a lot riding on this year's showcase. A lot of the player base has kind of lost faith in the quality that Ubisoft can deliver after games like Far Cry 6 just kind of landed and they fell flat. It's more Far Cry, it does it fairly well, it's not breaking any boundaries, it just is what it is. The same could be said for a game like Watch Dogs Legion that kicked off the generation, but the only reason it was as successful as it was is because it was one of that handful of new games that start off a new console generation. Those are always going to sell pretty well because people are wanting the ray tracing that's in a game on a console. People are wanting something that's new, and Watch Dogs Legion was able to deliver that. Now looking forward, there's still plenty to look forward to from Ubisoft. Immediately, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora comes to mind. That might not be the number one Ubisoft game that's on your list, but it's still on the way. On top of that, we have games like Skull and Bones that was supposed to come out in just a couple of weeks. It's now been kicked out a bit, but it's still on the way. I'm excited to see what that one even looks like. You've got Tom Clancy's X Defy, the free-to-play game. You've got The Division Hardland, another free-to-play stake on the Division world, which I think could be pretty cool and could be profitable if they do it well and it does end up being a good game. But then you've got the big money makers like Assassin's Creed. And so a new rumor that came out today is that Assassin's Creed Mirage has been delayed to 2024. Now, there is no confirmation of this. There has not been a statement about this. And this is coming from Insider Gaming, Tom Henderson's outlet. So there is some validity there, but there's also been a lot of misses as well. This is coming from a data miner and other sources have said this is not the case. But if we're thinking about reasons why Ubisoft would want to pull out of a showcase, a big delay like a new Assassin's Creed game not landing this year very well could be one of them. You also have to think about things that could land this year. And I'm not saying this is going to be the case, but a Splinter Cell remake, more details on that deserve a showcase. And so I think maybe they're kind of in between where maybe they didn't have quite enough for an E3 presence, a booth on the show floor, a big stage that's ready for them to make their showcase. But a quick little digital event, something like that, that's been held in LA, uh, something of an EA play, if you will, that could be enough. And they could have enough content to fill up a showcase of that nature. The other side of this is that Ubisoft might just not want to be affiliated with the losing show this summer, because E3 versus Summer Game Fest is now the name of the game. That's kind of how it's been the past few years. And now E3 is back in full. They've got a physical event, they've got a digital event. Now on the flip side, Summer Game Fest has a physical event to go with their digital event. Kind of did a reverse E3, if you will. So now all eyes are on that. And behind the scenes, you also have the underlying undercard fight with Jeff Keighley versus the ESA. And Jeff is not shy about sharing this stuff on his timeline either, because he retweeted the E3 2023 Ubisoft story from BGC. And then he also tweeted, don't you worry, child, see heaven's got a plan for you and a gif, which is clearly a reference to the E3 situation. He wants this show to go downhill because it is head to head. It is neck and neck. And he's just playing into the drama around it which, I mean, 
I gotta respect the game. Flipping over to the E3 side of things, the organizers behind the scenes seem to just have their heads in the sand about what this event needs to be in 2023. Because back in the mid 2000s, E3 was a cornerstone of the gaming industry. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's where developers and publishers went to unveil new hardware, to unveil new games, to debut new franchises altogether, show off their new concepts. That's when all eyes were on the gaming industry. But that was pre-social media. That was in the fledgling days of the internet. That's before we communicated in the way that we communicate today. E3 no longer needs to be where the biggest publishers and developers come to show off their stuff. If it is going to be that, it's only that because of nostalgia. It's only that because of that feeling of having one unified week where everything is being shown off. There is no longer a necessity to have people flown in from around the world to see your game debuted in person. We can all just look at it online. It'll hit Twitter before I probably would even see it in person if I was just running around on the show floor because I might have had to run to the bathroom. Could have been in a demo booth, whatever it might be. It's much easier to distribute information today digitally online. That's why Nintendo Directs have become so popular. That's why these PlayStation Directs have become so popular. They have another name for them, but I forget what it is. Uh, the same thing with the Xbox Developer Directs that have started coming out. They know they can just tap into that core audience that's going to be there on day one by simply sending out a tweet or posting an update on YouTube, whatever it might be. They no longer need E3 as a show. So then the question is, what does E3 become? But then last year, things started changing even more because it was announced that Reed Pop would be running E3 going forward starting in 2023. So that's the company behind events like PAX, San Diego Comic-Con, Star Wars Celebration, and others that are mentioned here in the official PR statement. But what this signaled to me and a lot of other people is that E3 was no longer going to be the cornerstone gaming event of the year. This was no longer going to be where announcements were made. PAX, Comic-Con, and Star Wars Celebration have news sprinkled throughout, but it's more of a fan celebration than anything. It is a true convention versus just going and convening to see the news. It was something that people went to go enjoy. That's what E3 needs to be going forward. That's the event that fans deserve, and that's quite frankly what is going to keep E3 alive in the years ahead. My vision for E3 is that it needs to be a blend of what it was and what it realistically can be today. Get the big three back on board, rekindle those relationships and say, we don't need you to do a big presentation where you're showcasing your biggest games, making big announcements, showing off hardware. We don't need that. We need you to be present on the show floor with some really cool demos. Now for PlayStation this year, let's say that was the case, they could bring Spider-Man 2. Let's say from Xbox, they could showcase Starfield. Then from Nintendo, they can showcase whatever they've got coming up. I don't know what's going on. I'm recording this of the night that they're shutting in the Wii U and 3DS storefront. So that's where my mind is, but that's not what E3, you know, you know what I'm saying. The big three can bring their games and showcase them on the show floor. You have representation from big AAA publishers there. Then contact your double A's, like your Devolver Digitals, your THQ Nordics. Then go down to the indie developers and the indie publishers and get them on board. And you get a nice smorgasbord of new games that are coming out from the biggest of the big to the smallest of the small. From there, say, hey, people around the world. This is a new E3. This is where you come, grab a drink, grab some friends, and you play some hot games coming out over the course of the next year or so. That's what E3 can be all about. It doesn't need to be the cornerstone of how marketing is done in the gaming industry. It is not the pinnacle of the year. It is not the world summit of gaming that it was when I was growing up or many of you were growing up. It's something else now, and it's time for it to transform. Because that transformation moment is going to be the difference between E3 transforming into a successful event that's smaller than it was and less significant, but something that's still cool and relevant in the gaming industry today, or it could very well transform into a memory because no one wants to go, it has no purpose, no big publishers support it, and everybody's out and they don't even need to put it on anymore because what's the point? Getting back to the topic at hand to wrap things up, Ubisoft no longer coming to E3 2023 is one of the biggest nails in the coffin for the old E3 and really is up to Reed Pop and the ESA to revisit this and come to terms with the fact that they need to pivot and they need to do something else. And I, for one, love E3, and I said this on Twitter, I'll say it again here, E3 has the potential to be just as big as a PAX. 
people know that the Penny Arcade Expo is not where they're going to see massive debuts. You aren't going to see new hardware. You could see some cool little indie debuts and things like that, but it is going to be a celebration event. It's where fans go to hang out and play the games they love. It's where podcasting groups and content creators go to collaborate and network. It's where game developers meet up and rub elbows and get to know each other. That's what E3 very well could be, and Reed Pop knows that. They organize packs. They know what it could be. It's up to the ESA to ultimately make the call to let that transformation happen. Now that of course is just my two cents. I would love to know what you think down below. Could E3 survive in its current state? What do you think about Ubisoft not being a part of the show anymore? And do you think that E3 is going to be around in five years time? I feel like that's a pretty good gauge to get your opinions on it. And of course we will wait and see what happens because E3 is ultimately just a couple of weeks away. We're quickly approaching April, which means we are going to be seeing some incredible showcases at Summer Game Fest and potentially at E3, depending if anybody stays on board. But as always, thank you guys for checking out the video. If you did enjoy, be sure to drop it that like, leave your thoughts down below, and I will catch you on the next one.